I was able to knock out about half a dozen German tanks. Um, um, tell me about your field of vision as a gunner. What can you see in, uh, as a gunner? Well, it was a very... Well, it was a periscope. I've told you before about a periscope. And it gives you... How much do I say? I could see quite a distance. About a thousand yards. I mean, that's an easy. And put it across. You could put it across about... Well, it's, it's hard to visualise that because the distance between them. But you uh, could see quite a good of, of, of the countryside, quite a bit of it, and you could uh, you could pick out different targets. You could see infantry moving about for a start, and it's mach machine them, machine gun them was what you use there, and any tanks you saw who aim fired solid shot. Or eight, or eye explosive depends on type of tank. In your periscope, were, were there any crosshairs? Oh, that's. I too... mean, explain to me, um, for someone who knows nothing about this. Oh yeah. How would you, now, as I'll, a gunner, tell you. can you explain how you aim at a tank? Yeah, well, the periscope was about uh, three or four inches wide, and in depth, be about two inches. Well, in the right hand corner was the telescopic lens. So you could pick up and on the telescopic lens was crosswires and that's where you did it. And the crosswires was before you start anything you'd see T and A the guns we record it, T and A. Test and adjust. I mean you put a, a piece of cotton across the muzzle of the gun so it formed a crosswire, and you put that onto some sharp object, edge of a building or something, and you adjusted your telescope to the same, same, uh, same point of well, same point of aim, which would be at about three hundred yards, three or four hundred yards away. But and, how do you have time to do that if you see a German tank? Well, you do that before you start off, right? You you see now the gun before you go into action. Make sure. So you're hoping. The first time you put your crosswires onto a German tank or anywhere, the gun will fire and hit that target at the same point. And that's what happened. Now, as a gunner, do you also have access to a machine gun, or those are the... It was, set. It was a machine gun, and the, and the tank was operated by the gunner. Was, uh, if, by, uh, we had buttons on the, on the feet, on the bottom of his feet, on his feet, and the one button was for the main gun, and the other button was for the machine gun. Now, the, the, uh, op the radio operator loaded the machine gun, when he ran out of ammunition, he put a fresh, he put a fresh belt in. But and same with, as, as with the gun, he loaded the the gun as well. Were there times that you used the machine gun? Oh yeah. Well, the uh, German infantry used to try to well, if you don't understand normally, cornfields, they would try to creep through the thorn, thorn uh, cornfields. I'd take you by surprise. So we used to spray the corn, ground level, with the machine gun. Whether you saw the Germans there or not? Whether we saw them or not. You just watched the corn to see which way it was waving. If it was waving the wrong way, you let fly. But you see how just... Well, cornfields, you know, they, they wave with the wind, the breeze. Well, if they were going against the breeze, you know, those Germans coming through the, through the cornfields. So you just sprayed them with a the machine gun. How close would you say German infantry were able to get to your tank? Yeah, very close at times, especially at night. They used to infiltrate into the, into the uh, lager where we were. And, uh, well, lob, if, they, if the tank turret was open, they'd lob a lob grenade into, inside the turret. 
Did you ever see that happen to other tanks? No, I only heard about it. Because mm. we had guards out, but uh, sometimes the Germans could infiltrate through. Now, the Germans had the Panzerfaust, which was an infantry weapon. Oh, yeah. Did you guys have any experiences against that? No, it was a, it was no. like the Pia. It was a Panzerfaust, no, no. Yeah. No, I've never come across it. What kind of targets would you fire at when you were using the cannon? I mean, oh. usually, I mean, can you, can you just list to me the kind of targets you remember firing the cannon at? Oh, a uh, steeple, definitely. And other tanks, German tanks, yeah. German tanks, and that's uh, mainly, uh, that's, uh, yeah. What about trucks, or, I mean, would you guys uh, ever fire at lorries, or...? No, I never come across them. We were too far forward. They was, and we, then the Germans, they didn't show theirs. I mean, all their, what we was up against the front line tanks mainly, not uh, not not the echelon. So it would, I mean, but would you ever fire the cannon at German infantry, or would it just be the machine gun at the infantry? Use a machine gun mainly. Not a cannon. Not a cannon. Even oh, if you one time I did, yeah. One time I did fire the cannon because uh, I, I, I don't like to put in blocks down, but the tank commander wasn't very good and he was supposed to give me the range of a group of uh, German engineers that was carrying mines that had been laying mines somewhere and he, I, I asked him for the range and he couldn't give me the range well, she was busy doing something else, so I had to fire the cannon to find the range to fire the machine gun. And that was it. It just went over the top of the German, the group of Germans, and they, of course, I say they ducked and started hiding behind trees, but I still hit them with the, with the machine gun. In fact, I was cutting the trees down, they were hiding behind them. As they went behind the tree, I just machine gunned the tree until he fell over. And then that was exposed, and there was about oh, about twenty of them all together, I think. And what happened to them? I got every one of them. See them all fall down, and even ones on the. I, I hate to do this. <sighs> Had a machine gun while I was lying on the ground. But that's a job I had to do, I had to do it. But I was thinking about it now. And I think about it, I mean, our blocks coming back to this country in coffins. We, th we thought about their wives and their kids. But I'd just done exactly what they'd been through. And it was Germans. But I think you need to understand that what those Germans yeah. and what those Japanese yeah, well, were fighting for, it was just evil. Yeah, There's no way yeah. around that. Yeah, I had to do it, but when I think back now to what I did. But Mr. Beto, if you didn't do what you had to do yeah. and kill those Germans, people like me would not be alive today. Mm -hmm. And I, and I mean that, I'm not just saying that, I truly mean that with all my heart. Oh, that's the way I'm looking at it, I suppose, yeah. Everyone you see here the, in this country, in the United States, in France, the reason they get to wake up in the morning and their house isn't bombed out, but that they can go up to anyone and say whatever they want without any fear of repercussion, it's because of people like you. You're the real frontline soldiers who saved democracy and liberty I and that's true yeah right. I, I mean you know when you think about what the Germans did to the Jews mm, so, those Germans yeah. who you killed they were helping protect a government that was literally murdering an entire race yeah. of people true I mean yeah. so 
I've never been in your position, so I can't talk as if I have. But what I can say is that I can guarantee you with all my heart that you've saved more lives than you took. Guaranteed. Probably the best way of looking at it, I suppose, yeah. Well, it's just the truth. Yeah, it's only coming back occasionally, but, you know, it's just one of the things. <sighs> but if you didn't do what you did, they would have never thought twice about killing one of your friends. Well, they didn't, because I lost them. There was uh, three tanks, well, we were leading tanks. We just joined the Shield Rangers from the 24th Lancers. We were the three leading tanks. Lieutenant Cameron was in one. I don't know who's, who's I don't know. See, no, I don't want to say this. The sergeant who was in charge of my tank had been sent back for some reason. And we had another sergeant, and I don't know his name. And then there was Lieutenant Cohen and the other tank. There were three tanks abreast. Going, well, it could be in wood, it could have been an orchard, I don't know. Well, suddenly, a tank on the left went up in flames. That was where my two mates, Ron Baxter and uh, Fred Ely, was, 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 got killed in that particular camp. <sighs> Joe Pelter got out. He was all right. Robinson, Rob, Robbie Robinson came out with his foot off and Lieutenant Cameron, who was in, it was his first time in action, had shell uh, pieces of metal in his legs. But they got out and they went back to the stages. And on, as I say, the one side of the, on the other tank went up, and me in the middle missed, they didn't touch us at all. Who? The German gunners. They missed us. Uh, we backed off. But we didn't know it. But there was a sunken lane behind us. And we sank straight into the sunken lane and stuck. Couldn't move. But nobody could see us either. As the, the banks were so high, they hid the tank from the German goodness. So I got away with that one. So where were you guys headed when this happened? Oh, we were heading into... Uh, I don't know, we were attacking a village and we were going through the wood. I can't remember the name of the village. And so you were on your way to the village yeah. and then what happened? This, uh, they opened for anti-tank guns opened fire. Oh, this, and the two tanks either side of me was knocked out and we dropped into the sunken road so they missed us. What happened to the men uh, in the second tank that was knocked out? I don't know. I, just, uh, I was still busy helping with the other tank, with uh, where my mates have been killed, and Robbie Robinson has got, he's got his foot off, and Lieutenant Cameron, who was in the tank, got his, his legs are wounded and could hardly walk, so he had help into a, a first aid station. Who did? We did. Our tank crew. Did you get out of the tank? Get out of the tank. Well, there was nothing we could do. So was this after the sunken road? Into the sunken no, road. I'm saying after you went into the second road, you guys got out of the tank to yep. help them? Yeah, help them out, yeah. But what happened to the men in the other tank? I don't know. I mean, do you remember seeing that tank getting hit? It got hit. It went up with uh, flames and smoke. Well, I don't know what happened to them. <laughs>